There we are. There we go. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How's everybody today? Um, we are here Friday. I have no idea. Oh, the 21st of May. Um, on Relationship Rehab. Yes. This is my wonderful husband, Paul. Hello. And I am his wonderful wife, Lee. That's right. Usually that's us your time to say it. Oh. Uh, it's true. <laughs> See you. <laughs> it's okay. Hey there. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a tough week. Well, it's been a great week in the couple dumb world, but it's been exhausting. Busy, I'll very busy, 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 busy. And you are our wonderful audience. Yes, you are. Yay. And hello, Cougar Mama, and hello, I think Michael's here also. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. Right. Um, hi, guys. Hi. Yay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> let's see. Let's recap the week, shall we? Okay. Um... This week we started out um, on Sunday night by having a conversation and deciding, you know, things were things were, you know, had been going great, but at the same time we wanted um, to jumpstart. Right. And you know, when we want to jumpstart, we do we do something called creating an intention. So um, for those of <laughs> you who have never done that kind of stuff. Uh, we always recommend uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer's book, uh, The Power of Intention, mm -hmm. which is a very powerful book. Um, and we believe uh, in this stuff. We believe in this stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, while we were there, you know, we were watching TV, and so we're both thinking about what did we want out of this week. And what we wanted was a game changer. Right. We wanted a, a big, big, you know, step forward. big step forward. So... Um, you know, and of course we have to do our part too. You know, you could ask the universe for what you want, but you can't just sit there eating, you know, combos and drinking wine waiting for that's it. That's the way I do it. What do you mean? That's what that's. <laughs> um, no. So, um, so we Die in the champions right there. <laughs> so, you know, um, Tuesday we started, we, we've been writing a relationship book, um, and, you know, we decided, okay, we have enough. To, to send out, a, you know, feelers to see if right. we can get an agent. And um, so we did that on Tuesday. We sent one feeler out. Mm -hmm. And within a couple of hours, they were biting back and asking for a full proposal. So we were very excited. Um, our wonderful producer lady is looking through this now, mm -hmm. probably going, uh, you might want to start over again. But... <laughs> Um, but anyway, so very exciting, you know, so, you know, the prospects and the possibility, you know, the possibility of getting published um, for our work is very exciting, and that was the whole point of starting this in the first place. That's right. That's right. Yes. And um, we also bought a new computer. And we bought a new computer, so no more problems. Right. No Specifically more tech problems. Specifically for this show. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And so what, Ricky? No, no, no. No. Go. Go watch your show. Ricky, Ricky is just nuts. Anyway, so then, and you know, this week also we got, we received our daughter's SAT scores. Oh yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's been an emotional week because you know once you get those kind of things, then the the reality that in a year from now she'll be graduating and and moving on and <clears throat> living her life and all that kind of just you know crowded into us all yesterday too. So. Very excited about that. Very excited about our prospects, our daughter's prospects. Just a very exciting time. So yeah, I mean, with her scores and her grade point average, she can go basically wherever right. you know, the where, school she, wants where she wants to. So <sighs> you know, the double-edged sword. It's like, yes, I'm so happy. She doesn't want our plus. I mean. Good no. school, very big. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like you know, I actually thought UCLA too, but at the same time, such a big school for her, you know. And, and Jeannie, Jeannie is visually impaired, and um, her left side doesn't work so well, and she's also hearing impaired, and she has Asperger's. So the idea of throwing her into UCLA, yeah, it's hard to eat, I know, <laughs> I couldn't go to else? UCLA. <clears throat> I used to go there to the library, one of the thirteen libraries. Yeah and would get lost and overwhelmed and they would find me under a tree in the fetal position. So, <laughs> yeah, I went to Loyola, very small school. Not anymore, but it was very, back then. Very small, yep. So, 
We are talking about communication, and yes, this week has been all about communication for us. I mean, you know, in a relationship, well, in anything. I mean, remember, you know, we believe, a couple don't believe that, we're in relationship with everything, mm-hmm. with ourselves, with the universe, with our community, with the environment, with our children, our lovers, partners, everybody. Um, and so when we start having any kind of change in our lives, what we tend to do as human beings is kind of just shut down. We stop communicating. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, kind of like, you know, when you're on a roller coaster trying to maintain a conversation with the person sitting next to you while you're, whoa, and going <laughs> up and down. And, you know, it's very difficult to do. And it really takes, um, what's the word? It takes focus. It takes um, commitment. Um, so the point is that, you know, we need to take a second during the craziness and acknowledge that you're on that roller coaster with somebody else. Right. Um, doing the, you know, okay, this is happening to me. Yes, it is happening to you. There's no question that it is happening to you, but it's also happening to the people around you. Right. And even if it's just something for your own success or your own, you know, your own, like, illness or anything like that, it still affects everybody around you, so the communication is very important. Um, This week on our blog, we've been talking less about the communicator and more about the listener. Right. So that's important. Well, first thing, I mean, why do you communicate at all? To be heard. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it goes, you need both ways. I mean, talking, I can talk. Yeah, but being heard is something very, very different from being listened to. Go ahead. Very much so. <laughs> and that's not only that, it's just um, we spend a lot of time in the, you know, in the self-help world talking about how to communicate. How do you say this? How do you say that so that effective communication? How do you say it so that your point is, is coming across? Mm-hmm. And all of that means absolutely nothing if mm. nobody's listening. Right. Mm. Um, which is sad. You know, okay, now you do get some sort of satisfaction. You do get satisfaction being able to voice the words. You know, I know, I mean, in in the therapy um, I've done and, and the therapy that we've done with mm-hmm. the experience, being able to release those words that, that have been trapped inside of you are very important also. Right. Yeah, where we, I mean, we have done the kind of stuff where we talk to a chair and the chair, you know, represents mom, dad, yeah. whatever, because we can't talk to them at the time. And that is very powerful. I Having a, a, an incredible flashback right now. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> I was in graduate school at Loyola, um, and they had uh, somebody from the, the Gestalt Center, the, the, the Pearl Institute in Los Angeles, was there teaching us Gestalt therapy. And um, now remember, I went to school back in the 80s. So they didn't have the brief therapies and they didn't have anything like that back then. So um, and they just invented Gestalt, right? <laughs> yeah, right. They had just invented right. Gestalt. Right. Roy had, was just born. <clears throat> yeah, he had been there the week before. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. The guy's there, and I, of course, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, if you've ever watched the show, but I tend to be out there, and I tend to, you know, and in school I was no different. So, of course, somebody's like, hey, do you want to volunteer? I'd always raise my hand, and I'd always be the first one to jump up there. You know, can you imagine? No, I don't know my Yeah. So, I know, because I'm, I'm such a wallflower. Yeah, shy. A, shy is the word I would use, too. So, I go, you know, I volunteer for it, and we start talking about, You know, he's like, okay, talk about some sort of issue that you have. And um, and it was, I think I was bringing up some teacher that I had had as an undergraduate who was a real asshole. And and, um, he wanted me to talk to him in the chair. And I just couldn't do it. Could not do it. And I sat there and I just started laughing, going, God, this is such a crock of shit. And... You know, now in retrospect, you know, being able to think back on, you know, what an arrogant, you know, 
little shit I was back then. <laughs> but you know, but really, um, you know. more precisely, the fact that he tried he tried eliciting that kind of emotion with a with a subject matter that wasn't going to bring up that kind of emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, sure I was angry with him, but if you really wanted me to start emoting and talking, you know, bring up a parent right. or <laughs> you know somebody that that hadn't hurt me as much as wounded me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the difference Which between... Which then goes back to the listening part. Exactly. You know, it's like, I didn't really care if this guy ever heard me. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. because it didn't mean anything to me. But to have your parents hear you, mm -hmm. like really hear you, um, having your, your partner, your husband, wife hear you um, on a deeper level and accepting your point of view and accepting you where you are at that moment and um, you know accepting the way you see things you know because we have to acknowledge that I don't see things the way he does he doesn't see things the way I do but that his point is valid and my point is valid mm -hmm. that's tough that's tough to do if you're so busy in your me 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 mm -hmm. right if you're being right yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're blaming somebody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, Caesar. Caesar's here. Yep. So um, that's very exciting. It's exciting to to talk to people about the different. I mean, because about a year ago we wrote about communication on the blog. And we talked about you know using I statements, you know, mm -hmm. and the things that you teach clients to do to to be able to get your point across. Right. You know, like. When you start doing things like this, okay, I'm, we're going to do some communicator issue here. Because when you start doing things like, when you say this, this, and this, you know, you, you make me feel blah, 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 blah. When you start talking like that to your partner, you know, for example, when you, when you say that Freud taught at my school, you know, and all that stuff, you know, you make me feel old and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Well... When I say those things to him, what's the first thing that you feel? Um, blame. Blame. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I'm saying, he said something that made me feel something, right. so of course he's going to feel blamed, so he's going to get defensive. And it's shame. And yeah. You know, you know, depending okay. on what direction you want to go, either shame or anger. Shame, no. blame, defensive, right. you know, reactive. Right, reactive. You know, One way or definitely. the other, it's reactive. You're reacting to something. So immediately, you close up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. immediately close up and the reason why you're doing that is you know think of war because it's what it's what you do it's like you you close ranks you pull back you dig your hole mm -hmm. you know you're getting ready for the long haul war you know it's like okay wait a second I said something and now you know you know she's saying that I made her feel that and it's like so then there's a responsibility for how I feel there's you know so there's blame on how I feel blame on hurting me and all this other stuff so immediately you're going to stop. There's no way any more communication is going to take place because he's he's gone now. Right. And I could just be like, "Hey, you heard me?" And, and, and all he's hearing is "wah wah wah." <laughs> mm -hmm. Because he's already going. Okay, now where can I go to to find what I need to get her back? I have a conversation in my head going that's way louder than anything else that he's saying. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it starts is, out with, you bitch, blah, 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 blah. Or it's about, I mean, that's the thing. It depends on your personality. Right. Because, you know, me, usually, no, I don't do the, uh, you bitch. I do okay? that. Okay? I don't go to anger. I go to, uh, I go more to saying. Mm -hmm. So that my conversations are the, um, you know, I did something wrong. You know, what can I do to get her back? She hates me. She, she's going to leave me. She's going to leave me. Right. And it rotates. It goes into that whole thing. Right. Yeah. I go completely opposite. <laughs> I do the, you know, you bastard, actually. That, that was, <laughs> right. I'm thinking uh, of going back to, like, when right. we were first uh, married. That would be, that, I did that once. We were having, uh, like, our first fight. And my first reaction was to call him a bastard. Mm -hmm. It's like that one time. And it's like, 20 years, 21 years later, and I still apologize for it because I've never, ever done that after that. Yeah, right. No. I've never done that since then. But it was just like, oh my God, you know, this is my reaction to feeling cornered, my reaction to, um, 
to feeling like maybe I could lose him. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so all of a sudden I become like a little, you know, little caged animal. But I'm not listening to him. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm no longer listening to him because it's the way that he was communicating. Now, if I said the same thing of, you know, when you said the thing about Freud, I felt old. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like, you know, like you believe that I was old. And because I felt, you know, old, I felt like maybe I wasn't pretty enough for you, enough for you, you know, and that kind of thing. And, <laughs> see, but there, <laughs> there, I take responsibility for how I feel. You know, there, I, um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just all. <laughs> um, there, I, I'm saying, okay, that's, that, that's great. You know, it's like, you said that, and I, and I immediately went into my own crap of, okay, Freud, early 1900s, this means I'm old, you know. And, and the, the feeling of, of my own personal feelings about getting older, you know. So that had nothing to do with him. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could have been, you know, watching, watching an 80s, you know, video. Right. And then going, oh, my God, I remember that. Oh, my God, I'm so damn old. <laughs> you know, and then, but those are my feelings, and he's not responsible for those. Right. But... Because I could say like that, he's also going to be there for me. He's mm-hmm. going to be present for me because it's about him being there for me and listening to me. Mm-hmm. And all of this, all of this wonderful stuff, um, is related to what, you know our guest today. And then you know the reason why I'm mm-hmm. doing all this, like laying down the foundation, is that we have a, a special guest today who's going to be talking about couples therapy. And a special form of couple therapy called Imago, um, and which is all about communication. Um, but we're going to get to him in a, in a few minutes. Let's get into the listening part. Okay. Okay. So, being an active listener, what does it involve? Before you answer that, tell who we are. Okay. <laughs> we are Relationship Rehab. Um, we write coupledom.com, and I am Lee, and this is my husband Paul. You're on Mingle Media TV. You do that so well. I know. I know. Thank you. I know. We have a, in the in the um, the work that we do, the therapeutic work that we do, that we go to, you right. know, that we don't actually perform it, but we are clients of. Um, one of the processes is sitting there and having people tell you things. Mm-hmm. And this is a great thing about listening. Mm. This is a great one. That's true. And uh, you have to sit there, and people are going to say nice things to you. Mm-hmm. And um, nice things, nice things. Okay. You things know, you really nice things like be things able like you know, hear. yeah, you know things like, wow, you know, you're you're a really special person. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um, okay, quick story. I do for the same retreat center. I I cook for them. My sister and her husband run the retreat center, so I I do their cooking. I cater for them. And I do that because it's my sister and because I like cooking and all that. So um, over the last few years that I've been doing it, I've, I've you know, developed some talent mm-hmm. on being able to cook, thank God, and they're not eating gruel all the time. <laughs> but um, a few weeks ago they had a, a, a training in from, from Seattle and, um, and I, you know, it's like a six-day training and by the time... The, it was like the, the Sunday night, and it had been there like five days, mm-hmm. and I was so exhausted. A lot of so, cooking. Yeah, lots and lots of cooking. So I'm, you know, there serving the food, and and one of the ladies walks up to me, and she's like, you know, I have to tell you, you know, I, I own a restaurant, and you really should consider opening up your own restaurant. And, and, and now I'm hearing this, mm-hmm. you know, and half of me is going, oh, you know, that's really, wow, that's really amazing. The other half of me is screaming, absolutely not. Hmm. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I, like, turn around and walk away. And I'm, like, you know, making the, the salad and whatever. And, and she's like, she goes, hey, you know, did you hear me? Now, realize they do this kind of therapy. They do, you know, therapy in there. And they, they get trained as therapists. <clears throat> so, you know, as a therapist, I knew what I was doing. I was totally avoiding her. And, you know, I go, okay, thank you very much. You know, and she kept, like, hounding me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm like, it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm discounting you. And immediately I said that, and I knew that I was lying. Mm-hmm. Because I was discounting her. And I was like, okay. 
she's giving me a compliment. She's saying something really nice to me. I should say, thank you. I know. Mm -hmm. Because I know I cook well, but I couldn't take it from this, like, arbitrary woman telling me this who actually has experience in this. So I turned around and I'm like, no, I am discounting you. I apologize for that. You know, thank you for your compliments. I know I'm cooking well, and I appreciate that. And it was like this, okay, that's fine. It was still a little weird. Mm -hmm. But anyway, in the in the training, you just sit there and people say nice things to you. Right. Now realize you're, you know, at least for me, natural reaction, I think most people, is kind of do a, a, like a Wonder Woman thing. And when they start choosing them, you do everything you can to block them. Okay? Actually, I do the whole, 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 whole. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Usually it comes with a no, 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 no. It comes with either justifications why they're wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Well, they're stupid. You know? Yeah. There's a lot <laughs> oh, wow. Um, just a full on stick the fingers in the ears and just la, la, listen, la. right? There's a lot. La, la. So, um, so, yeah, you just kind of do whatever you can to deflect. deflect. And that's what we, how we listen most of the time. We mm -hmm. listen, we listen for for reaction instead of listening for reception. Um, and Explain that. I will. Okay. <laughs> if you're listening for reaction, basically you're you're coming, you're already coming back with a comeback. You know, it's like you're trying to volley it back like you're playing tennis. And communication isn't that. Communication should be more like a shot put. You know, that they're tossing something at you, and you receive it, and you sit with it. And that you're, you're processing it, you know, and accepting it. That's what co real communication is. That it's really not for you to be, you know, throwing it back. And that's one of the problems that men and women have a lot, is that um, we communicate very differently. Whereas a woman wants to be, you know, more more times than not, just wants to be validated and heard. You know, men feel that they need to step in and fix it. So mm. if I'm saying things like, mm. my God, I'm having an awful day, Paul's like, okay, what can I do? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, dude, you know, just sit there and listen right. to me. Okay, but what do you need me to do? Do you want me to take over the kitchen? Do you want me to do it? It's like, no, just sit there. And then what ends up happening is that you start fighting about Something completely different mm -hmm. when it all had to do with the first communication. Now, in the case of like, you know, the man, same thing. Oh, I'm having a horrible day. And a woman sitting there like, okay, tell me about it. Men aren't socialized to sit there and share. So there's a lot of, um, it's a pressure to share something that they're not ready to share. I mean, just even from a sociolinguistic point of view, men use linear type of language. So we use language that is command based, tends to be shorter sentences, um, tends to be mm -hmm. very controlling, um, because it is that linear. Women use emotionally based language, you know, socially based language. Um, sentences tend to be longer. In structure, mm -hmm. um, things of that, things of that sort. So to say, you know, tell me about it, is doing a whole, a whole language technique. I'm not going to say a whole language, but a way of speaking that's not typical. That's not natural for us. Mm -hmm. you know, that's well, and it's also because usually... they also report it. Right. You know, women aren't used. To, women don't want to hear the report. Women want to hear how you feel. Mm -hmm. And. Why do people not accept compliments well? Because we don't believe them. <laughs> is it a confidence level? It's a, it's, it's a self-esteem level. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a self-esteem thing. Because we have, we, have, um, we have two images of ourselves. We have the image of, wow, if I got my shit together, this is who I would be. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. this, and this is who I am. Which is a major disparity. <laughs> Two things, okay? So, when you say to me things like, gosh, well, you're so funny, what I'm hearing is, you know, you think I'm funny, and then what I'm saying back in my head is, if you only knew how messed up I was, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think I'm funny. And those are, that's why people don't accept the compliments. It's the, 
it's the conversation in their head saying, if you only knew, mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, you're so nice. It's like, wow, if you only knew what a bitch I was, you know, um, uh, gosh, you do so many things for people. And it's like, yeah, if you only knew what my motivation was, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a confidence level. It's more of, um, of a secrecy level. Um, when you remove the shame between you and the world, because shame is something that we create that, that separates us from the world. You know, it's that block from, you know, I can't let people in because if they knew this stuff about me, mm -hmm. they really wouldn't like me, so I can't say it. So when people try to, like, lob compliments at you, you have that protection saying, dude, you have no idea who I am, okay? And you think you do. And there is an anger behind it when you don't accept mm -hmm. the compliment. You know, it's like, screw you, you don't know who I am. So once you remove that shame between you and the universe, then you can accept things. And you can say things like, you know what, that's true. I am a wonderful person. I do wonderful things. You know, yeah, sure, I've done some stupid things in my life, but who hasn't? So, yeah, I am great. I'm fat. Thank you, I know. Right. You know? So, you bring my ball? Yes, I will bring my ball. So, it's time to bring on a, a wonderful person. Um, we are introducing our guest today, Michael Sherman. Is he on? Okay, you keep talking. Oh, here we go. Here we we're come. doing the, come. the thing. Okay. Michael Sherman and his, his wife, Amy, um, are the, the, oh gosh, I'm lost now. Okay. They are um, Imago counselors. Um, Imago. I-M-A-G-E-G-O. Um, which is a type of couple therapy. Go ahead. Uh, um, Michael, if you're there, you need to choose your camera. Waiting for him? Come on. Right. So we Come need on. to put this on. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so um, the point of this is we want Michael to talk about the type of work that mm -hmm. he, he and his wife do with couples um, because the model is all about communication <coughs> and a different kind of communication. So they have two websites. They have relationshipdestiny.com, which is a site that, does, that has audio programs um, that are like Imago based, and then they have CourageousLovingNation.com, which is an interactive blog devoted to helping people answer the question, who are my relationships calling me to become? Um, and allowing you to listen to a structure that helps create safety and resolve conflict. That's what Imago Dialogue does. And then the other one is CourageousLovingNation.com. Michael, are you there? Ricky, get out, please. Mm. I know he's there. Yeah, he's there, but... Guys, keep talking while I... Okay, so, um... Of course, me, and... I mean, I've, I've met some Imago therapists before. In fact, one of the guys who's in the, the training of the lady that I was talking about, one of her trainers is an Imago therapist. Matt, um, who's here in Fort Lauderdale, and um, wonderful guy. He's my he's my food soulmate, as we like to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting way of of doing therapy. Um, couple therapy is very different from regular one on one counseling, um, or even just marriage counseling. Couple therapy. You know, depending on how you do it, um, a lot of people do couple therapy separate. They'll do, like, um, you'll see the wife, you'll see the husband, you'll see them both together for 15 minutes to give them an assignment, and you send them off. You know, a lot, of, a lot of therapists do it like that because they have a hard time with conflict. You know, that's their own personal stuff. You know, and of course we're not going to share that with you, but, you know... I've been around the block a few times and right. I was like, you know, some people really don't like watching that. I can't really control that. Um, and it's a different dynamic than just having, you know, just the one-on-one, -on -one, all of a sudden it becomes this triangle. Like, you know, so you want, you want to funnel the, the, the dialogue through you in the beginning until they become safe to dialogue together. So in the model therapy, it's really teaching the couple to 
to talk to each other, to be able to co communicate with each other. <sighs> Do you want to play the video? Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Um, here's, a, here's a video of the founders of Imago Therapy doing, she's going to be doing, he's, he's been talking for a while, so she's going to be doing what the listener does in the Imago Therapy, um, which is mirroring what he's saying. So, okay. hit it. So, think about the difference there, because he's talking about how what he was sharing in the beginning was how he feels. Okay. Um, <laughs> how he feels when when there he is, Michael. Turn it up. Can you talk? Hi there. Hello. Okay. Okay. I can do that. Good. Hey, Michael. How are you? Yeah, we can hear you. Excellent. Yes, we can hear you. Can you, can you need to turn them up more? No. No, I think that's your. Is it I can hear fine. Oh, okay. Good. Great to oh, see you too. You Thank can't you. hear him. We can. Okay, Caesar. Can you hear uh, Michael? Okay. No. No. Uh, Michael, um, on the left side of your screen, okay, on the left side of your screen, there's a little um, speaker. orange speaker icon. Grab it and drag it upward, and that'll make you louder. Okay, and see if that works. Okay? See if you're louder that way. I, I don't know, Caesar. Can you hear him? Yeah, Caesar. Can you hear? Because I can hear. We can hear him fine. That's why I'm. So. Caesar still can't hear well. 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 Okay. Have him talk. Keep talking. Have him talk. <laughs> Go ahead and say something, Michael. Keep talking. No, Michael. Go ahead and talk. No, he's not. There's no volume. There's no volume. It's apparently it's just the two of us. Yeah, keep talking. Go ahead. You keep talking and we'll figure it out. I don't know what the hell. Audience can hear. Okay, we're good. Oh, okay. We're good. Excellent. So, um. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about Imago.
Um, one of the things that I, you know. No, there's a delay. Yes, there's a delay. <laughs> uh, one of the things that, you know, back in the day when I went to school, um, we learned as therapists uh, from uh, client-centered therapy, person-centered therapy, Carl Rogers, um, doing, doing the mirroring. And with the Mago, it's like apparently you guys do the exact same thing. The, the being able to take what somebody says and almost like re repeating it to, to show them that they've heard you've heard what they said. Oh, he's not frozen. Oh, he's not frozen. He's reading. Oh. <laughs> That's, that's the, I mean, for me, you know, and we talk a lot about the idea of creating safety for one another, um, just being heard, and that's one of the things that, um, that the video showed that Dr. Hendricks was saying, that he felt validated and he felt safe because he felt that she heard what he was saying, you know, that it, you know, it's like, yeah, you're getting the words, but there's also that music, that melody behind the words. That's important to understand too. I, I think that one of the things um, that we notice in our relationship is that you, we usually have three kinds of conversations. We'll have the just bantering, you know, bouncing stuff off one another, you know, giggling, laughing, just having fun with one another kind of thing. And it's actually it's more of a one-upsmanship. Who, <laughs> who could be funnier than the other one kind of thing? So You always win. I always win. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but you like that. Yeah. So then... And then the other one is, um, like when we're working, it is, it's really, you know, it's almost like having one mind, you know, that he, he goes, he starts where I stop and, and what, that's when we're working together. And then it's the, when we're doing our feeling stuff, you know, the, I'm feeling this, this, and this, where the other person really has to stop reacting. That there's no reaction to that, mm -hmm. so is that's an important thing for the the listener to be non-reactive.
kind of like the cone of silence. <laughs> we do that. We do the the cone of silence conversation. Right. The the okay. What I'm about to say is full of judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm saying this to you to release it. All right. There were certain times when you get to turn it on and turn it off. Yes. And I have to admit, okay, when I first saw the, the Imago stuff, you know, <laughs> I looked at it and I went, okay, this is some really heavy shit, okay? <laughs> and basically because I was stuck on the mirroring part. And as I started really listening to it, I saw the, I really began to grasp the idea of validation and empathy. <laughs> and that, you know, it, when you look at it all rounded together, then I can see see definitely the power in this and having that structure. I think that for me the 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 bigger part is the the I know. Well, I'm going to say something anyway. Okay. Um, my my thing was I was with Paul. You know that okay, okay. I was doing the okay. This is the hippie shit stuff, which is okay because we're from California. We, yeah, we usually we are hippie, hippie shit. Yeah. As a therapist, <laughs> I got to admit, you know, um, I've always liked hippie shit. But what I love about it is the idea that. You know, the idea of creating safety, the idea of creating, I mean, as, and I don't, we don't believe in partnership. We're not, we have a big problem with partnership because there's a, there's a certain amount of individuality within partnership. But really what you're creating is one cohesive unit because when you can see the point of view from the other person's side, you're all of a sudden becoming one. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's not just the way you see things, the way I see things. I could see things the way you see things, and then you could see things the way I see things. Then it's no longer me me against you, it's us. Or when you're able to acknowledge that the point of view is looking for the best thing for the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that becomes where the common ground is.
interesting. Yeah, so that seems to be one of the the other big directions of Imago is that part of the relationship process unto itself is to heal the other partner. You know, whatever I mean that both partners are to be being healed within the relationship. Right. I mean, obviously, it's being able to step outside of yourself for a second is going to give you the opportunity to be able to look at things differently. Right. So, um, I wanted to to remind.